Hello all, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another video on this channel. In this one, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about pulmonary fibrosis that runs in the families. So familial pulmonary fibrosis, so lung scarring, this is what pulmonary fibrosis means, but which tends to run in the families. This is a common thing. And I want to just talk about this because it's not only a lung disease. So many people think that, okay, we've got, we go to a pulmonologist, for example, we get some investigations done. We find that there's potentially a lung condition, potentially lung fibrosis. And if you're watching this channel, maybe this is why you are here or you have a loved one who suffers with this condition and you're looking for information. Now, if there is pulmonary fibrosis in the family, I just want to say that it's important to look for other conditions as well, because pulmonary fibrosis that has a genetic or heritable predisposition may actually be part of a larger syndrome, multimorbidity. This is a concept that's being looked at more and more in recent years because it's been found that some of the predispositions that lead to pulmonary fibrosis can be linked to a lot of other conditions and these can affect the individual who has pulmonary fibrosis but also family members so some family members may be absolutely healthy but there may be a predisposition in the family and they may de develop certain conditions later on in life which may not be pulmonary fibrosis so this can be a rather complicated and nuanced topic or you may have family members who have other health problems so for example let's let me give you an example because maybe that helps if for example one person goes to a pulmonologist is diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis so let's say they are called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis this is the diagnosis they receive they may also on a personal level suffer with a blood disorder they may have chronic anemia then they may have some family members who are healthy in good health playing sports doing well they may also have some other family members for example a brother or sister who also has pulmonary fibrosis maybe not idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis a different label or they may have another person in the family who doesn't suffer with any lung disease at all but they may have a lot of other conditions so for example they may suffer with rheumatoid arthritis they may also have anemia, they may have unexplained liver disease, and it's important to note that all of these multiple conditions can actually be tied to the same genetic predisposition. And this is something that's being increasingly recognized. And all of these conditions can be related. So things like pul pulmonary fibrosis, blood disorders, for example, lymphomas, leukemias, things like that, and chronic anemia, Autoimmune conditions, so some of these can be linked as well. So things like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, systemic sclerosis can also tie into this, this multimorbidity concept. Also, unexplained liver disease. Someone who hasn't been drinking, hasn't had hepatitis, chronic hepatitis, but they develop liver disease, liver cirrhosis with no apparent cause. This can also be linked to these predispositions. People who have early gray hair, for example, going gray, gray, their hair turning gray in their late teens, early 20s. Again, something that can be tied to these predispositions. Early menopause. If you have family um, members, female family uh, members who have go through the change in their late 30s, for example, that's a little bit early. Now, I don't want to worry anyone by saying these things because... It's important to just think about family hin history in a wider context, not just for the condition that we're looking at. So for example, if you are seeing a pulmonologist for pulmonary fibrosis, it's important to think about your family history. Are there any other unusual conditions in the family? Are there any other cases of pulmonary fibrosis in the family? It's important to mention family history to your doctor, even if the doctor sometimes may not ask you because of other things they need to talk to you about, about your own individual case. But family history is really important. So this is what I, what I want to, to mention in this video, because we need a lot more awareness of how family history ties in together with the individual condition someone may be suffering with. It's really, really important because then we can raise awareness. A lot more questions can be asked. A lot more answers can be found through research. So, for example, in the case of familial pulmonary fibrosis, it's actually a very under-recognized condition because a lot of people do not talk about, for example, their brother, their father suffering from the same condition. You don't get to mention this in a consultation because sometimes the, you are bombarded with a lot of information about treatments, antifibrotics, a lot of things. And few patients actually talk about family history with their doctor. 
this can be also because the doctor sometimes doesn't ask you because they are focused on other things or there may be limited awareness. So it's important that we work together, doctors and patients, to raise awareness about familial interstitial lung diseases, familial pulmonary fibrosis. But what if we identify a genetic predisposition? Let's say there is a significant um, family history. There are a lot of conditions in the family that we are concerned there may be linked into a wider predisposition. It's a cue to live healthier because we can actually influence our genes by how we how the, our body interacts with the environment there is this concept of gene, genetic environmental interactions and actually it can lead to improvement so for example if you are smoking and you stop smoking that improves probably your genetic health this is a term that i'm i'm just using here it's probably not something formally known or formally uh, appreciated but i I can talk about this, I think, about having good genetic health because we are all born with different predispositions. That's absolutely fine. We cannot uh, force nature. But if we have some predispositions, we can control some things. We can control how our bodies interact with the environment. So stopping smoking or if we're having a job where we are inhaling a lot of dust, a lot of fumes, if we're exposed to toxic chemicals, maybe using appropriate personal protection, avoiding certain jobs that make us not feel good and maybe replacing those jobs with you know robots or other machines that can have can develop in the future so we have ways of improving our lives if we have hobbies that are toxic for us if we were using a lot of pesticides in our garden maybe we can switch to natural alternatives so there's lots of things that we can do to control our exposures to things that may damage our bodies uh, subject our bodies to a lot of stress, a lot of unhealthy stress that can lead to problems. And there is evidence that certain lifestyle changes can actually improve this genetic health. Now, again, this term, I'm not sure if this exists, but I think we can just think about that in that way. I think it's a good way of thinking in, in, in a sense of how can we make sure that we're not doing damage to our own bodies because some of the damage that we do to our DNA through exposures and things like that, we can actually pass that on to our uh, our children so we need to really be careful i think that's really important because we can improve our lives and the lives of our uh, next generations so our body for example if we expose it to healthy levels of stress and challenges that's actually a good thing so for example if you are challenging yourself to be a little bit better in your career in your personal life you're learning new skills that actually triggers your body to adapt triggers an adaptive response that can be good However, if you overwhelm yourself with stress, that's probably going to be detrimental. So that's really important. Having good relationships around you, things that, having people that do not stress you out, that <laughs> make you feel uh, like you're going crazy. That's, again, a good thing to, to have. It can help you improve your genetic health. And this, these things have actually been studied before. There are books. There is uh, this book that I actually highly recommend. I have it right here, uh, The Telomere Effect. It's a good book. It's, it really outlines things uh, that relate to lifestyle, relate to diet, relate to relationships, how we interact with the environments that our environment that actually can lead to better genetic health, let's say. Progressively harder exercise, again, is very good for the body because we are challenging our body to adapt, to make it stronger so that it co copes better with whatever we may encounter later on. So that's good. Having good diet, avoiding processed foods, our body wasn't designed to eat processed food. If we think about our ancestors coming from monkeys, apes, etc., we weren't eating processed food. There wasn't processed sugar. There we, we didn't have refined sugar in our diets. So those things can put a lot of strain on the body and actually make us unhealthy. So focusing, for example, our diet on including more whole foods, such as greens, veggies, whole nuts, things like that can actually help a lot. Breathing in clean air. Again, it's really important because we are trying to protect our lungs, especially if you're watching this video and you're thinking about ways to protect your lungs. If you've been diagnosed with a lung condition or you're worried you may get this or you're worried someone in your family is struggling with a lung condition, having access to clean air, so being maybe somewhere not next to a factory, living in a healthy environment is probably good for your health. Having good sleep, again, abnormal sleep, disrupted sleep, 
insufficient sleep, they have all been linked to higher stress levels and worsening genetic health, let's call it that. And then obviously, if we incorporate these lifestyle changes and we figure out that they work, we can do research, we can observe what happens to people over time when they have healthy lives and we can see that there's better life lived, there's a better life lived, we have a longer uh, span of healthy life, we can then think about how we can influence policies, health policies, social policies to have healthier societies overall. And I think we can all strive in that regard to be the best versions of ourselves. Obviously, we cannot influence the genetic lottery. We all all be predisposed to different things. But there are a few things in life that we can control. And then that's usually our lifestyle and the people we choose to be around with. So around with so, uh, around. So we, I believe this is really, really important. I just wanted to mention that with familial pulmonary fibrosis, the situation is really, really com complex. There are other conditions that can be associated with it, either in the individual who suffers with the, this condition with the pulmonary fibrosis or in family members. And it's important to recognize that if there is a family history that's really significant, there's lots of people who have various conditions in the family, it's a good cue to try to improve lifestyle you know, to the ability that each one can uh, can incorporate. So not everyone will be able to incorporate all the lifestyle changes, but even small things may actually have a big impact in the long run. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in future videos. Please leave a comment below if you have further questions.